All right, so Camera Store just released its um, list of top 10 35 millimeter SLRs of 2021. And I thought I'd uh, give you my thoughts and commentary on, um, for those of you who are looking to get into film, you're looking for your first film uh, camera, uh, it's natural that you would be attracted to the 35 millimeter SLR. That tends to be the most popular kind of film camera. Uh, 35 millimeter is the most popular format. The SLR is the most popular kind of 35 millimeter camera. Um, and so if you're looking to get into film and you saw this list for some guidance, that's probably a good idea. Uh, I want to offer some thoughts to, uh, to individuals who may be shopping around. So the top 10 contains five from Nikon. And I know most of you probably say Nikon, but I grew up in the United States where we say Nikon, so please forgive me. Uh, so half the cameras are from Nikon. And uh, then we have three from Canon. And the remaining two, uh, we got one from Olympus and one from Pentax. So that's, uh, that's, rather, that's rather interesting. So let's take a look at the cameras from Nikon first. Um, the most popular Nikon cameras are the F, the F2, the F3, the FM2, and the FE2. And these are all outstanding cameras. Personally, I own three of these five. Uh, and these are indeed probably the best film cameras uh, that Nikon made, at least with mechanical advance, uh, with mechanical film advance. Um, if I were counting the autofocus um, uh, cameras, I, I would put uh, the F100 and uh, the F6 on the list. Um, other than uh, these, you might add the FM3A, but that's, that's going to be even more pricey than, than, than uh, the rest of these items. But for sure, these are phenomenal cameras, and it, it's no, no surprise that they're really popular. Uh, but what if, uh, what if the, the price is a little out of your league? You know, you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks at least for uh, one of these cameras in decent condition. Um, so what, um, uh, what, what's the budget alternative? Is there a budget alternative that's just as good? And the answer is yes. Um, I've spent a lot of time on this channel talking about Nikomats. And here is, well, this is a Nikomat. It was uh, originally a Japanese market camera. Uh, so it's branded Nikomat. And uh, generally they're called Nikormat with two Ks. Um, but this is a rock solid alternative to the top dollar um, uh, popular cameras that you see on the list. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on this channel talking about Nikromats. Um, I have a playlist for Nikromats, so please do check that out. If you're not familiar with the Nikromat, it is a viable budget alternative. They're phenomenal cameras, built like a tank. Um, you could drive a nail through a 2x4 with one of those things and still take pictures. And they're just great cameras. Um, I'm going to take a minute here to plug my own uh, work, if you'll forgive me. Uh, I self-published a book a couple years ago called Nikon Film Cameras, Which One is Right for You? Um, it's up on Amazon for $3. I'll link to it down below. Uh, I put a lot of effort into it. It's gotten some really good reviews. Uh, I'm very proud of it. I stand behind it. And if you are seriously considering one of the, one of the top uh, Nikon cameras or, or, or you're just determined to get into Nikon because you think it's the best 35 millimeter system, and you, you may be right about that, um, please do have a look at, um, at, the, at my self-published book. Um, I really do think it would be helpful for you. And Three dollars worth of knowledge, guaranteed. Um, no question about that. All right, let's take a look at the offerings from Canon. So, Canon made the list, and it made the the, the cameras that made the list from Canon AE1 and A1, uh, and these are both from the Canon A series. The Canon A series when it was introduced in 1976 with the AE1, followed up in 78 with the A1. Uh, there were several other models produced after that, the AV1, AT1, and what, the AL1, I think, that, I think that covers it. There was also the AE1 program, which was a modification of the AE1, which added program mode. Other than that, it's identical to the AE1, um, and I, 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 I don't use program mode, and I don't know anybody who does. So, um, The problem with the Canon A-series cameras is that they are completely battery dependent. Um, they rely on an electronic printed circuit uh, board uh, or printed circuit system uh, for, their, uh, for the meter reading and to actuate the shutter. And they're 40 years old. You know, these, these cameras are not, um, th these are consumer cameras. Um, I think it's fair to say that in the late 70s to early 80s, uh, Canon dominated the, com the consumer 
uh, 35 millimeter SL mark, SLR market much in the same way that Nikon dominated the professional market. Uh, the Canon A series was supported by a huge advertising campaign. It was extremely successful and they were great cameras, no question about it, uh, but they were great cameras back in the day. I don't know how well they have survived um, in terms of their electronics. Uh, I've, I've heard both the people at Camera Store um, uh, and, uh, and other sources indicate or su suggest that um, the, the electronics are starting to, to fade on these things. Uh, the, the light meters aren't as accurate. Um, and when the electronics go out, that's it. You can't replace it. You know, there, there are no replacement parts available. Um, personally, uh, I was glad to see that the FTB made the list. It was number 10 on the list nonetheless, but it still made the list. Um, and that's the camera I would recommend. Years ago, I had a very extensive Canon um, FD collection. That is Canyon Manual Focus. The, candle, the, the mount was called the FD mount, and the, the system was called the Canon FD system. And I had a very extensive FD system. I had two FTBs. It was my go-to camera for many years. Um, it is one of the most well-designed, well-built mechanical SLRs ever made. I highly recommend it, and I think that if you're getting into film today, um, sure, these, these offer automatic exposure. Uh, this is match needle metering, but um, this is more reliable. This is gonna last you longer over time. I, I would strongly recommend the FTB over the AE-1 or the A-1. Um, also worth mentioning uh, is the T-70. T-70s are dirt cheap. Uh, it has a, uh, it's a, it was a later model from the 80s. Um, uh, it's still built for the FD mount. It's manual focus. It offers, I think, two different metering modes. Um, a similar feature set to the AE-1 basically, um, but updated for the 1980s with automatic film advance. Um, it has a quirky, non-standard control interface that takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, it was a bit of transitional technology, shall we say, but they're dirt cheap. They're absolutely dirt cheap. And in terms of capabilities, it's, it, matches the AE, it ma matches or exceeds the AE-1. Um, so my suggestion is, instead of the AE-1, um, if, if you can't find yourself a nice FTB, um, you might be able to pick up a T70 for you know twenty thirty dollars or something you know some some you know fairly low price because they're not um, they're just not that popular because they're kind of ugly the, the the interface is a little odd um, they they don't have that retro look with the uh, you know they don't have mechanical film advance but again if, if you're looking for a good platform for your Canon FD system lenses um, uh, I would recommend a T70 I had some, I had one a few years ago and I was very happy with it um, the non um, See, so other than Canon and um, Nikon, we've got two other cameras, the Pentax K1000. Um, I made a video a while back about um, a question whether or not Pentax is really a good budget system. Uh, and the only reason to get a K1000, in my opinion, is because they're inexpensive, but they're not inexpensive anymore. Um, they were everybody's favorite student camera back in the 70s, and so they have this nostalgic value that's been driving up the price for years, and I think that the K1000 prices are inflated. Um, I question whether the, K, uh, the, the Pentax um, uh, came out is a, a really is a worthwhile budget system to pursue. Um, I think that M42 is a better budget, budget system. Uh, my suggestion is if you, if you want something on a budget, uh, go for M42. Uh, I've made some videos about this uh, Ricoh. I've recently picked up a Practica. I uh, got a few lenses for this thing. Um, there were quite a few manufacturers made quite a few lenses for the M42 mount. And if you're just looking for something that's simple and reliable, which again, that, that's the only draw of the K1000 is simplicity and reliability. Other than that, it really has, has very few advantages. Um, no, not, not, that I'm, not that simplicity and reliability aren't, aren't uh, important. They certainly are. But if that's what you're looking for, my suggestion is take a look at an M42 system. Um, I've got a uh, sort of an ongoing project that I'm calling uh, M42 on a shoestring, um, where I'm, uh, I've purchased some very inexpensive M42 equipment, and uh, I've been very pleased with the results. So that would be my suggestion. Um, the last camera on the list, or the, the, other, the other camera on the list, is the Olympus OM-1. Got nothing bad to say about it. Um, I've never owned an Olympus system, uh, but the Olympus OM system uh, equipment is top notch. It is uh, well respected. It is really good stuff, and everything is compact. the The cameras are compact. The lenses are compact. The um, uh, the accessories are, are compact. So if compact size is a priority for you, then you might want to take a look at the Olympus system, um, for sure. It, it is it is top notch equipment, um, and it's and again its main main competitive advantage is 
the small, light, compact size that it offers. So if that's something that's really important for you, then absolutely take a look at Olympus. The OM-1 was their mechanical camera. Uh, they also made the OM-2, uh, which was the um, um, electronic shutter aperture priority automatic camera. Um, OM-3, I think, is fairly rare. And then the OM-4 um, uh, is also electronic shutter aperture. I think it's aperture priority. I don't know if it offers much else. Um, it may. The OM-4 was kind of their G-Wiz camera of the OM line. Um, so sure, check those out. So next question, well, what's not on the list? It should be. Um, and I'm going to make a couple suggestions. We got two good budget systems that did not make the list. So if you're on a budget, you're looking to get into film 35 millimeter, uh, Konica, number one. I've made quite a few Konica videos um, on this channel, so there, I've got a playlist for Konica. Please do check it out. Um, Konica made some really good stuff back in the 70s, um, and it's worth picking up today. It is mostly a forgotten brand, so the cameras and the lenses are, are uh, sell at a, a considerable discount versus the other manufacturers we've been talking about, and, um, and I highly recommend it. I think Konica has a lot to offer. Um, secondly, Minolta. Not a single Minolta on the list. Um, Minolta, I'll say this, you've got basically two classes of Minolta 35mm cameras in manual focus. You've got the XG and the X series. These are plastic bodied cameras that are battery dependent. Uh, my understanding is that they've developed, uh, they, they tend to develop capacitor problems over the years. Uh, and if the capacitor goes out, then, the, then you, you've got a doorstop for a camera. Um, my, my suggestion is avoid the X, XG and X series for that reason. Um, I just think the um, uh, battery-dependent electronic cameras from the 1970s and, uh, and 1980s, they, they, they weren't built to last 40 years. They weren't. Th these were consumer products. They weren't meant to go 40 years. And once, once they're dead, they're dead. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you can replace the capacitors in these things or not. I really don't know. Um, my suggestion would be the SRT series. The, the Minolta SRT series is metal, mechanical, built like a tank, construction quality, battery independent reliability. Um, this, and I think this offers a, a really good alternative to, for, for people looking to get into 35 millimeter. If you want to buy something that's going to last, um, then, then the Minolta SRT series cameras are something definitely to look at. Um, for Minolta, again, I don't have any videos about Minolta. I owned an SRT202 and an X570 years ago. Uh, I enjoyed them. They're great cameras. Um, I will refer you to this source of information uh, online, the RocorFiles.com. This is an old website dating back at least to the early 2000s. It's probably 20 years old. I hope it's still up. I hope that link is still live when you click on it. It's um, As of this moment, it's still up, uh, but it contains some uh, more information about the um, Minolta manual focus 35 millimeter cameras than any other website that I'm aware of, R-O-K-K-O-R-F-I-L-E-S.com. Uh, so t check that out, Minolta, good budget option. Okay, so um, that's what I've got for you today. I uh, hope that you have found this video interesting, amusing, entertaining, informative, or some combination thereof. And uh, thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and as always, check out the links below. Take care now. Bye-bye.